G'day and welcome back to Down the Shed with Byron, where we're working on the Nissan X Trail again, just doing a basic engine oil and filter change and just a general look over. With the vehicle set up now, I've just put it on car ramps to make it easier for videoing and access to get under it. But you can actually fit under there and you will be able to get a drain tray under there if you haven't got a set of car ramps. So just a heads up. Tools for the job, something to get the filter off. I like using these clamps which um, really bite into the filter and get it off. Um, a 14 mil socket, so you can use a spanner or a ratchet. A few consumables, e.g. some rags, a bit of degrease and brake clean, your oil and filter. With the bonnet pop now, or your hood, um, just have a general look over your engine bay, sussing out oil leaks and bits and pieces before you actually start the job. So you got some idea of what was there before you started. <laughs> now getting under the car, the sump for the engine is just there. And your sump plug is just at the back here. We'll start by undoing that and draining the oil into the tray. Now I have got the vehicle in like a warm state, just drove it from up the front of the house down to the back. Um, but yeah, you want to have the engine all warm. Do that. And unscrew the plug. Ah! What I was trying to show you is when you get it to that last thread, be ready and pull it out so you don't cover your hand in oil. Have a rag on standby. So while we let that oil drain, it's a good time to give the sump plug a good clean up and replace that aluminium washer, copper washer, um, whatever your flavour you like to run. Um, you can get away with reusing them, but in this case I'll throw a new one on and we'll put the plug back in once that oil's drained. And just a little tip, if um, your washer is damaged and you're going to replace it, but you need your car to run down the, to the shop to grab it, grab yourself a spanner. Um, and try and work out what size it is. In this case, 12 mil spanner fits on that sump plug. So you need a 12 mil washer. Uh, that's just something you can do. You can put that back in for now and run down and grab one later. Another good rule of thumb is either leave the sump plug out or refit it and make sure it's done up tight. So you don't forget it. With the oil drained out now, let's give that a quick wipe. Put the plug back in. Now tighten it up. Remember it doesn't hold the car together, so it just has to be firm. Now while we're under the car, we'll move over to the oil filter, which is positioned just behind this plastic cover. You can pry that back just enough to undo it. We'll move our drain tray into position, so that way we don't drop anything on the concrete. And we'll see if we can undo it by hand first. So as you get it to those last couple of threads, just try and catch it if you can. Bring it down and we'll put it into the oil tray. Let's tilt you down. Put it there. We'll give that a clean and um, then we'll put the new filter on. So if that filter ends up being a drama, these pliers wrap around and you can see how they clamp onto it and you can unscrew it. Now another funny thing is I dated it last time I serviced this for uh, the lady the 22nd of the 9th last year and it's literally a year later. <laughs> I have to double check the kilometers that she's done just to give her a kick up the bum. I think she's done a few extra k's since then. Anyway let's put the new filter on. So with the new filter it comes with a little plastic cover Pull that off, grab some oil from your container, just a bit, and run that around that rubber seal. Now we'll reinstall that and I'll write the date on it for today and um, then we fill the engine all up and we should be good to go. With the filter mating surface all cleaned up now, 
we can reinstall that filter. To fit the filter, it actually has instructions on the filter cartridge, but what you want to do is screw it up until it just touches, and then you want to go three quarters of a turn. So um, just make a mark, or like have a think about it, and then go half and a little nip, and you'll be right. So there where it's just touched, we'll go, that sticker was at the bottom. Sticker's about there, so it was there to there. That's roughly three quarters, eh? So that should be all right. Now, because we're on those ramps at the moment, I'll just probably put four litres in for now until it get it back on level ground. But according to the internet, it's 4.6 litres goes into these cars. So I'll just take the oil cap off. And I can't remember if I mentioned you'll need a funnel, but some oil containers come with funnels. Mark the back of your um, oil container or just have a, an idea of where the five litres is and um, where one litre is and then tip it in and measure it as you go. And once you're happy with how much oil you've got in there for now, even go to, I wouldn't go 4.6 straight up, but go about that four, four and a bit, double check it, which I'll show you where the dipstick is now and how to check it. So if you look into the engine bay, your dipstick's right here. So start by pulling the dipstick out, giving it a wipe. Now you'll see Hopefully it shows you there's a dot here and a dot there. So that's your minimum and maximum. So as long as you've got it in the middle here somewhere, you'll be okay to start it. Just remember you've got an oil filter to fill up too. Now I've roughly put four litres into this and we are just on that low mark there, just over it. So what I'll do, I'll just top up a touch more so we're about here-ish, and then um, that way I'm safe to start it and move off the ramps. Move the funnel, put the cap back on. Now we'll just start it up. You'll notice your oil light will stay on for a little bit, but it should go out in a couple of seconds. Done. Right, I'll just move it back onto level ground and we'll double check that engine oil level. So once you're happy with the engine oil level, I hope you guys can see that, it's on the high mark. Um, it's time to move on to have a look over the engine. So from the dipstick, we can move straight over to your main drive belt and just have a gander at that and make sure it looks like it's in good condition. That one possibly needs a replacement. We can do that later. Now this is a windscreen washer fluid we can top that up and put a bit of bug stuff in it. Your coolant overflow reservoir, and hopefully you can see there's a minimum and a maximum mark on the side there. So it probably just needs a little top up. From there, your brake fluid, again, a maximum and there'll be a minimum level somewhere, but we're just under the max, so that's okay. And if you wanna top that off, just have a look at the top of your cap. And if you have a look at the top of the cap, you'll see it will say dot three or dot four or whatever's recommended in brake fluid. So you can top it up with that. From there, you can move over towards your battery and just have a quick gander, make sure it hasn't got any corrosion around it or the terminals aren't loose, give them a shake and make sure your battery is secure, which is this clamp here. From there, we can move on to the air filter, which is just a matter of a clip on the side pulls up, pull your air filter out. Now what you're looking for is just big bugs or anything. Um, sometimes these are cheap just to replace, but what you can do for now, give it a tap on the ground, gets out whatever you need to get out, and we'll slot it back in, and we'll do that next service, we'll replace that for her. 
and then go from there. Just have a quick gander at radiator hoses. Now we've got no pressure in this at the moment, so it's okay to release the radiator cap. And I only try and do this when it's cold. So plenty of coolant in there. Now when you put the radiator cap back on, you'll feel it will come to a, a, like a lock section. That's right. Have another general look over your engine. And if you're not unsure, take a couple of photos or a little video of what you're trying to explain and maybe ask a mate. Right, another thing that's easy to do is double checking your tires. Now on your tires, you have a wear limit, which on the side here, you should be able to see a little arrow. So just there. Let's see if we can find the other one right here. Now, if you go from there across your tread, you'll see a little wear indicator. Now, just double check that and see if, um, if they're down to that, it's advised to get them replaced. Now, if you want to double check your tire pressures, I'd advise again in the morning, running down to the servo. And this is what's recommended for your tires. Just double check your sizes. Now, if you need to know the size, it's on the side of your tire. Here we go, so we've got a 21565R16. So the pressures that we want to run will be, they're all the same. So in the front, we run 33 PSI and then the rear 30. Another little mission to do is to double check your lights are working. So just turn the ignition to on, put it in reverse, just go over them and make sure they're working. Headlights the same, side marker light, brake lights, all I do there is just reverse up to a shop window and see if they work, otherwise ask a mate. Alright, well I hope this has helped you out and given you some info or some heads up on just a basic service on your Nissan X-Trail. Uh, if there's any other little tips we can put in there for others just to help them out, throw it in the comments. Alright, take it easy and I'll see you when I'm looking at you.